Okay, the paper that I'm presenting today is partially a speculative argument about the road ahead for two of the dominant forms of media today, and partially a detective story about the interconnection between two pop culture relics of the past. The two forms of media that I'll be discussing are the nonfiction moving image, arguably the dominant political media of the last century, and the digital social network, quickly positioning itself to dominate the next. But to get there, we'll first turn to our detective story, which, like all good detective stories, begins with a mystery. The mystery we're on the trail of asks the question, the improbable question, what does Olivia Newton-John have to do with the flying toaster? <laughs> An enigma which opens onto the related question I'm sure you're asking yourself now, what do either of these things have to do with social media, moving images, or for that matter, the Habermasian public sphere? The simple answer is that both were the forerunners, and in a sense, the angel investors, of two of the most powerful political action groups working today. Robert Greenwald's documentary production company, Brave New Films, and the online political advocacy group, MoveOn.org. Uh, despite their seemingly disconnected roots, in recent years the two organizations have grown together in ways that challenge the distinctions between what we usually think of as documentary films or social media. While such an interconnection might be seen as evidence of the convergence culture that surrounds us today, all argue that this particular mix of media poses substantial questions for the concept of modern democracy and the potential for the reemergence of a public sphere. But first, a bit of history that will connect Olivia and the Toasters to their modern day successors. Before his career making documentary films, Greenwald worked for several decades producing and directing what the New York Times described as commercially respectable B-list movies, most notably 1984's <coughs> The Burning Bed starring Farrah Fawcett, and of course, the Olivia Newton, 1980 Olivia Newton-John vehicle, Xanadu. Yeah. And this is The Burning Bed. While several of these early films evince a clear interest in social issues, nothing foreshadows the transition that he makes in the wake of the 2000 presidential election to producing and directing some of the most critically acclaimed, commercially successful political documentaries of the last eight years. These include his Untrilogy, three films with deal with, which deal with the election, the Patriot Act, and the war in Iraq, respectively, as well as others like Outfoxed, Rupert Murdoch's War on Journalism, Walmart, The High Cost of Low Prices, and Iraq for Sale, The War Profiteers. For their part, Blade and Boyd got their start founding Berkeley Systems, a Bay Area software company that created a number of applications for the Mac, including an early text-to-speech program called Outspoken and a virtual desktop program, Stepping Out. Mainstream success arrived for the company with its popular After Dark screensaver series and the, uh, and the later trivia game, You Don't Know Jack. Um, after selling the company in 1997, Blade and Boyd began circulating an online petition via email in the wake of the Mon Monica Lewinsky scandal. It directed Congress to, quote, censure President Clinton and move on. The petition, which eventually generated over half a million signatures, established an issue-oriented, technology-driven campaign model that the resulting political action group and inspired has followed ever since. Over the last decade, the organization has adopted various social media technologies like Meetup and Facebook to extend its network of political activists into a number of domains, ranging from the individual election campaigns for specific candidates to more general issues like healthcare reform, in the war in Afghanistan. In the run-up to the 2004 election, Move On and Greenwald began working on a series of collaborations around Greenwald's films Uncovered, The War in Iraq, and Outfoxed, Rupert Murdoch's War on Journalism. For Outfox, Greenwald utilized Move On's volunteer base to cull through the hundreds of hours of coverage from Fox News that have, for the snippets that eventually appeared in the film. For Uncovered, the collaboration went even further. At Boyd's request, Greenwald produced an, a shorter version of his film for use at move-on house parties and organizational meetings in the weeks ahead of the election. Using the enth enthusiasm and feedback generated by the move-on screenings, Greenwald was eventually able to secure both theatrical and DVD releases for the films. Fast forwarding ahead a few years for the sake of time, the two organizations now routinely collaborate on one another's works. And later this year, Brave New Films will be distributing a documentary about move-on called Move On the Movie, and Move On itself regularly uh, contributes to, provides feedback for, even funding uh, many of Greenwald's various uh, mm -hmm. theatrical projects. Beyond these cross pollinations, however, Brave New Films and Move On also seem to be independently <coughs> evolving into hybrid entities, ones which meld political action, social networking, and media production into one technology driven center. For its part, Move On has for several years sought to blend its networking capabilities with traditional media most famously perhaps with the 2003 Bush in 30 Seconds competition, which created 30-second spots about the Bush administration, with the winning entry to be aired during the Super Bowl. 
The Move On website is now regularly populated with YouTube videos, Flickr feeds, and other, other digital derivations of traditional media. Brave New Films, on the other hand, consistently releases segments of its films on the web long before they evolve into typical features. And its website now includes petitions, Twitter feeds, Facebook links, and other materials with which it hopes to, quote, revolutionize grassroots politics, unquote. And these two sites are not alone. We could add to the list any number of other organizations across the political, political spectrum, including the Tea Party Patriots and rightmarch.com. Um, so the question that I would like to turn to in the time that I have left is this. If this particular blend of communication, organization, and action is the new face of political advocacy, how do its constituent parts interrelate? Put differently, what is it that old and new media bring to the table here, and how do they work, together or against one another? On one hand, documentary film and social media make an ideal pairing, particularly where the task is grassroots organizing. With its long history of political mobilization, documentary is well-versed at translating complex issues into legible terms and articulating well-defined call to actions and arguments. Combine this with social media's ability to distribute material and organize disparate individuals, and it would seem that the two together offer the possibility for call and response, theory and praxis, expression and exchange, all ultimately culminating in political mobilization. But the question remains, do these, condi do these conditions, this particular mix of forces, constitute the possibility for the emergence of a public sphere where rational, tri rational critical debate can transmit consensus from civil society to the state? In other words, do these networked organizations replicate, replicate or create a space of dialogue and exchange where YouTube videos might play the role of political pamphleteering, or is this instead mass media recast as the media of the masses? While I don't have the time to fully lay out my answer to this, I can at least give a sense of what I believe to be the relevant stakes involved. Sites like Move On and Brave New Films have two tasks in front of them. One, bring people together to arrive at an opinion on an issue, and two, transmit this opinion up to the political realm. And yet, the heart of the two forms of media they utilize to do this lies at the heart of the at the heart of the two forms of media they utilize to do this lies a contradiction or an opposition. Consider, consider the difference, for example, between footage of a U.S. soldier express, discussing his experience serving in Afghanistan and an online petition protesting additional the additional troop deployment President Obama announced earlier this week. And these are both pulled from those two sites. Uh, whereas the footage seeks to move inductively from the specific case, this particular person, their unique experience, to general truths about the war, the petition starts with a general conclusion which requires our individual input to become meaningful. One form offers visible photographic evidence to support its truth claims, the other statistical data. One connects us to the real world where history, as Frederick Jameson says, is what hurts, and the other virtually connects us as individuals who might shape this history together. While this difference is what provides the type of synergy I explained earlier, it also creates the potential for these organizations to devolve into the types of manipulative publicity that Habermas describes eventually overtaking the public sphere. Central to the distinction is determining if either form of evidence in the media message it sends is a genuine expression of public opinion or is instead an opinion in search of a public. Propagandistic documentaries and pro forma petition signing Forms which scare us into adopting specific strategies or encourage us to fall in line behind others seem to point in one direction, whereas content which arises organically from its users and is shaped by the give and take of the organization's internal debate seems to point in the other. In my opinion, both Move On and Brave New Films have demonstrated the potential for both. At their best, they operate as true grassroots organizations, opening a space in which their members can come together and form a genuine public. But for this to be so, they have to remember that the sites they build and the resources they provide are simply that. Places with tools for people to come, to do, come together and do the work of actually creating something, even if this something is, is as simple and important as their own carefully considered point of view on an issue. For our part, we as a public will need to realize that political engagement on these sites depends upon us doing more than just consuming the extant media and forwarding it on for others to do the same. To return to the place where we started, here. My sense is that the founders of these organizations gave up their former pursuits out of a desire to be directly involved in democracy, and therefore the potential of what they created is best realized when we ourselves do the same. Thank you.